currently find ourselves at the craziest race for top four. With four teams all on 49 points and only two points away from Newcastle United and three points away from Liverpool and Manchester City, this is an insane race to see who's going to qualify for the Champions League. Any one of seven clubs could be booking their place in the Champions League, which is going to make this extremely insane. And hopefully in this episode, we'll find out our fate. We do have another chance to get into the Champions League as well, though, through the Europa League. League, but since we've drawn into Milan, that might not be realistic. And we are pretty lucky with the end run into the season, considering we played all the bigger teams already. We actually have one of the easiest run-ins out of all the teams vying for top four. So strap yourself in, get yourself a bev, and in this episode, we're going to find out if Leeds United, my beloved, will be playing Champions League football next season. But I do want to start off this episode just by giving James Trafford a quick mention. He's been an absolute beast with nine clean sheets that's the most in the league and he's only conceded eight goals he's looking like a pretty decent transfer at this stage and i can only hope that he'll keep that form going now we do have everton up first now i firmly believe that this is a very winnable game and i do believe that it's probably a winnable game that we could get away with quick simming and i quick sim and me have not gone hand in hand in recent episodes but I do believe that this one should be a quick sim. Now, if this game goes massively against me, I'm actually going to stop quick simming and doing the sim we did in the last episode where we'll sim the match and we'll jump in if we think we need to or we won't jump in. We'll let it play out that way. But we're going to quick sim this one against Everton away and it'll be a draw. So I think considering the amount of draws that we've had in the sims... From now on, we might do it the other way. Spurs played Man United and beat them. So that means Spurs should be in the driving seat for getting a Champions League spot. You see, just a draw drops us down to seventh. We still have the entire fate in our hands. It's only two points, but we are neck and neck with games now. So that, that dropping of points actually does hurt us a little bit. We need to focus now because we're playing against Inter Milan. Of course, they're starting Mike Trezor in this one, but it's not an Inter Milan side that is familiar apart from players like Letaro Martinez of course they have Melier in net today as well but there should be a lot of space down the wings for us to operate now we are pretty deadly when it comes to going down the wings and we will be in this one with Rafinha on the right and Illing Jr on the left that BI is up top today and Miley comes into the 11 as well apart from that for this trip to the San Siro it's going to be business as usual it's the starting 11 that you would expect and that has played so well game in game out this season now we can go on and have an emphatic win here and look unbelievable in italy or that european journey could fall apart who knows what's going to happen but i do think we've got it we've got the ability to pick up a win but playing passes like that not being smart with the way we move the ball won't help us and miley isn't used to playing in that midfield but We'll put in a great tackle there. Oh, we're going to move it quite central as Letaro finds the ball in. And Pichot takes it away from him. But why are we not tracking Letaro Martinez into Milan? Take the lead early in this game. It's a great initial tackle here. But it just nobody is picking up the second ball. Super frustrating start. But we've been here in the past, boys. We know how this feels. And uh, we've had sluggish starts before in the past. So hopefully... That will just be a memory at the end of this one. But it was an Italian side, obviously, last year that knocked us out. So, oh, I've spotted Maxi. What is that? What is that run for one? And also, like, why is that ball? I wanted him just dead over. Might be some space in behind now for Rafinha. He's going to be a dangerous body for us to get in behind today at any point. But Vardial is good. We'll take the corner. We've done next to nothing so far, but we do have a corner here. Maxi isn't a... A goal getting header winner. So I know that instantly. But can we create something after the fact? That's going to be the big thing here. We usually are very good at passing our way around the box. But today we just seem to have started sluggish. And if anything, I want to keep this first leg to a one-score lead to Milan, if possible. Although Illing Jr. into BR. Oh, he's pulled it wide. It's that left foot. He isn't comfortable. We need to get him much more comfortable on his left foot him not being two-footed is making life difficult for me because those first time shots where i think we're going to catch the goalkeeper off guard we just can't do he's broken down here and i know i've got rafinha in there oh he's gonna land to be ah oh my god 
Should have been maybe 1-1. If we could grab a goal, momentum will swing our way. Gray going to whip in a corner. It's a tall one. It's a tall one in for Beer. Oh, my God. He does win the header. The little German man does win the header. It's going to be 1-1. It's unexpected. He is the man that I would least expect to win a header in that situation and score the goal. But, oh, my God. We might have another epic tie against an Italian side. We had it against Napoli. They were the team that knocked it out. The most insane game I've probably ever played. And we make this one one here against Inter Milan. To be fair, I am more than happy at this stage to go in at half time, quarter of the way through the tie at one one. Don't actually know what Inter Milan's bench is like either, so they could be uh, they could have a really beefy bench that they just bring on and then start destroying us, but. I don't feel like we've really played our game so far against them. The formation has kind of like confused me a little bit. So I beat out Rafinha. That's the last thing I want to be happening. Trezor scores in this, I'll cry. I don't care. I might be a grown man, but I, I can still cry. Oh, this is good play. Actually, great. Wanted the ball on. Van Eywick. He needs help. Does he need help? Does Van Eywick need help? He's going to try and go all the way. It's great defending in the end. And Melier just collects easily. Actually, Gray wins the ball back. Into Rafinha. Across to Charles. Charles again. Across to Ellen Jr. This could be huge. As Ellen Jr. will make it 2-1. Leeds United capitalising on Inter Milan's mistakes. They're trying to pass it a little bit too much for their capabilities. And we are going to make it 2-1. That is huge. I mentioned it right at the start of the game. How there would be gaps because of the way they play their wings. And that is exactly what we found. We overload them in that area. We're Rafinha, Ilin Jr., Charles, Bia, and just one of our centre mids going forward. We just have such a body advantage when it comes to attacking them. They're not out of this because they still have so much quality and talent on the pitch as Lataro trying to get his second. That is a massive save from Trafford. Oh, Lataro brought down and they fire off a shot we need to get to the second one Trezor takes it out well, they're gonna make some subs but so are we so Denzel Dumfries comes off the Garnaccio that is one I did not see coming we're gonna bring on Young though we're also gonna bring on Timber in the center of the park do I want to bring on Young right now I don't know if this is the right moment for him but I didn't put Van Duven on the bench because I need him for the league game coming up against Brentford. Oh, and they play one through to Garnaccio straight away. Oh, my God. Barely had time to mention the subs. It's going to be 2-2. Instant reaction from Inter Milan making the substitutions. It's actually a really good finish from Garnaccio as well. They disguised the ball cleanly in behind me. And it's a good goal. Feels so frustrating to be back on a level playing field but they've been good this game do we i don't even know if we deserve the lead some time left on the clock so we start to wonder could i score another and with a ball through to Ellen jr like that a ball across to gibbs white we can score another it's gonna be free to in italy a place we seem to love to play leeds united have the lead once again really well worked great ball in from fran garcia to Ellen jr he's been fantastic once again and gibbs white pokes that home perfectly he's on a fine goal scoring streak is gibbs white none may feel any more important than that goal right there for morgan gibbs white and that might be 90 minutes done in Italy and us having a goal advantage but there's still 90 minutes to come at Ellen Road and anything can happen but I'm just so happy that we managed to turn this game around and at least come away with the advantage because the, it going to Italy could be no slouch. Before that though we did play Brentford in the Premier League and this time the quick scene was pretty kind to me. Fatui with a goal in the 88th minute will give us the win. But it's actually Drew in that game of Manchester United lost so that changes the race massively. We are now set in fifth place with the game advantage over Newcastle. We can actually leapfrog them and going to the top four. That is insane, and we're now neck and neck on points with Tottenham. But let's push all that to the side for a second, and let's see the side we will be taking on. They have made some changes. Weirdly, they're going with Samba in net, which is a very strange decision to me. And I think Veerman and Illich is a different two central midfielders. So it looks a little bit different. I don't know if they have tired legs, or... I don't know, but uh, I'm going to change stuff up. I'm going to go Gibbs-White to start in this one. Rafinha is in. Timber and Gray, of course, and Timber as the centre-back. And I'm going to give it to Gomez. James Trafford's a little bit tired, and Gomez has played most of the Europa League game. Do welcome Trezor back to Ellen Road. Obviously, with open arms, he had a great time here. 
it kind of was a little bit sour, I guess, towards the end on his perspective. But from mine, I enjoyed having him here. His injury did hamper him, though. There's no doubt about that. But now the focus will shift to trying to deal with this really good Inter Milan side. Also, I do start to question a little bit. Who would we play in the, uh, in the next round? Because that would be a huge game coming up. We will play that one behind again. I mean, Illing Jr. at the minute is absolutely supremely superb at getting in behind. That's a great ball. Gibbs White! Oh, Samba with a massive save. Bright starts at Ellen Road. It would be a cauldron in there tonight. We scored a header in the last game. Can we score on it? I do not know, but... I'm telling you right now, this would be an absolute cauldron. Illing Jr. trying to loft that one over. I'm just trying to be neat. I'm trying to be tricky. I'm trying to be tidy. Uh, but I aren't really playing like a team that has the advantage, am I, right now? Well, there's been an altercation, which has led to Gibbs White being down on the ground. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but that's not an injury that I want or am actually very happy about. Although this might open up here for Timber. Oh, he puts it wide of the post. We are going to see Gibbs White come off, though, with the injury that he picked up. And we're going to see CDK. I mean, imagine we could make that sub only a few seasons ago in a rotation game, might I add. All right, we just got an abundance of cams. And I'm so glad we do right now because we need to be blessed in these positions with any kind of injury. Thurman pumps it out wide to Denzel Dumfries, who looks to cross it. But Gomez decides to punch it. Oh, my God. <laughs> so reckless. Oh, Rafinha might have timed that one perfectly. Van Eyck's ball into CDK. Vadiol, fantastic. CDK stays down. I am slowly going to run out of my abundance of cams, lads, if this carries on this way. He's holding his shoulder as well, which usually when they hold the shoulder, it's a pretty lengthy injury. CDK, oh, wants that over to Ellen Jr. Ellen Jr. takes it, fires it. Samba is equal to a lot so far this game. Van Eyck. Spoiled that run from CDK. Imagine he scores that. He's injured. He's coming off for Lewis Miley. God, what a moment for that young man. But CDK maybe would have finished off the game if he scores there. Unlucky for him. And it's going to be a first half that we see dominated by Leeds United, but without a goal. So this game is still wide open. Samba has made some tremendous saves in goal in net. He's been fantastic for them. But as things stand, we are going through... But we have left this one wide open. And we are very strong at Ellen Road. So I do feel quite confident. The subs that we've had to make don't make me feel as confident. But, again, we are very strong at Ellen Road. Illing Jr. Illing Jr. Oh, never mind. Illing Jr. maybe just puts the bow on this one. It's 1-0 Leeds United at the start of the second half. Rampant down the wings against this Inter Milan side because of the formation. I mentioned it before. And Ellen Jr. will cap off, well, what has been a good performance so far over the two legs with a fantastic run and a fantastic goal. Samba weren't saving that one. The momentum firmly with us. And they're going to need two in order to get themselves anything in this game. And so far, it had been all Leeds United. Oh, they're playing well here. Garnaccio was a problem last time. He has come on for them again. Garnaccio turns his man. Oh, Gomez saves it. Oh, that's a great ball into Rafinha. From Maxi. That was a great ball into Rafinha. This one will be finished. Inter Milan has started throwing bodies at it. You could feel that. And I weren't really getting any rhythm. I weren't really touching the football often. But Rafinha absolutely finishes this tie off. We will beat Inter Milan. We can make the subs needed now. And again, the narrowness from us. The, the overload of players going forward has just destroyed their defense. And to be fair, I do actually think this Inter Milan side, minus a few players, is, is nothing like the Inter Milan side of old. The one that has just recently won the league. And also, it's just, I don't know, it's lacking in certain areas. I think in the center of the park, to be honest with you, is where they're lacking. Up top, they're not. Out wide, they're not. They aren't the strongest backline you've seen, but it's not a terrible one. But I do think the centre of the park, more the CDM, who's going to drop in to the centre-backs, hasn't been good enough. Miley, what a moment for the youngster. Miley, oh, no, he's put it wide. Oh, I thought we were going to be celebrating. He's kind of one of those youth prospects we're putting time into. We've done it with a few players, Van Duv and others. And I really like doing that. We'll have Older Bear Hill come back, and he's one of those players we've done it with. But I'm gutted that he didn't score there. That was oh, it was n near enough an open goal for him. But it doesn't matter in the end if the ball didn't hit the back of the net. What matters is that Leeds United 
will be taking their place in a semi-final in the Europa League. That is the big news here. And even bigger news, Arsenal have been knocked out. We're going to see this here. Monaco have knocked out Arsenal. That is, oh my God, that is huge news. Wolfsburg go through on penalties. Barcelona breezed through. What are we betting, boys, that it's going to be Barcelona and not Monaco or Wolfsburg. We'd keep the wins coming, though, and the Sims come in with good results as Ellen Jr. bags once again and Van Eywick to win us a 2-0 victory against Wolves. I believe that would have been our game in hand. Maybe our game in hand? No, we still have a game in hand ahead of Newcastle, but not ahead of Spurs, where we've created a three-point gap now. But it is still two points between us and Newcastle with the game in hand. It's all getting very complicated, but I didn't actually look and see what the Gibbs-White injury was. So, CDK five days, Gibbs-White four weeks. That is the one that is frustrating. Gibbs-White is such a big rotation player. Now, who are we going to have in the Europa League? It's been drawn. It's going to be Wolfsburg. We take that. Would I have wanted Monaco? You might think, yes, I would have wanted Monaco. We took their striker off them. But Monaco beat Arsenal. And I don't want to play against a team that beats Arsenal because I know how good they are. Aston Villa next them. And uh, we are going to sim it, but we're going to sim it the way that we showed uh, before. And jump in at any point that we feel like we need to jump in at. I mean, this is definitely a system that I've probably not used well enough or used i just think the sims take so long i mentioned it in the uh the last episode i think the actual sim time takes too long i wish i could fast it up or fast forward it to moments that happen in the game where i'm like okay do you want to jump in for this moment or do you just want to watch it because to play the highlight feature is pretty dead the selection of highlights just isn't i don't know it's not it's not great I would prefer it to be more open-ended. Like this, I can jump in whenever I want, but I prefer to just be able to see like key highlights or moments in the match and then jump in. I don't know, but we are going to concede early. So we're going to jump in, boys. We can't afford to lose here against Aston Villa. We already know that. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to try and get us back into this game. Lovely ball into Van Eywick. I mean, Junior then trying to pump that one across. Great defending. They've got Marquinhos and Romero. So they've got a really experienced back line. The rest of the team is a bit iffy. They've got Turam, who is great, but the, the rest of the team, I've got to be honest, it isn't fantastic. It plays that forward. Ooh, that's lovely. Bia. Oh, that should be us back in the game. There's no excuse. It's on his right foot. DK waits. Oh, that's lovely. Maxi. What can he do? Maxi. Oh, I saved. Oh, they don't save the second one, though. It was always going to be hard because he had to take it with his left. He doesn't save the second, and Maxi scores another goal. We are right back in this game like I wanted us to be. Just like that, we're going to jump back to the sim. So, I'm not saying we'll do that all the time, but I just think it offers that up to us. It gives us a bit more freedom to not play every moment of the game. So, uh, yeah, I'm intrigued to use this a bit more as we're going to find space here, actually. But, yeah, I'm just intrigued to use it a bit more. And hopefully we can go on now and maybe even win this game. I have decided to jump back in. 85 minutes. Neither side being able to score a goal. Let's see if we can come on now and, and go and bag a goal. Three points feels a lot more vital than this scoreline right now. I can't believe I'm going to play that into Oliver Skip. I'm not. It's a poor ball from Van Duven, the substitute. We've made a mistake. We've made a big mistake. They might score. Rogers puts it wide. Well, in the end, we couldn't actually do anything by jumping in. I'm seeing Tottenham won there. I think I saw a few other good victories. I think Newcastle won. Yeah, Newcastle have won. So now we're five points behind them with a game in hand, which would make us two points behind them. They're actually going to be very difficult to catch. We have the Europa League game to come up next. In the grand scheme of things, with West Ham, Palace, Sheffield United and Southampton left in the league... I, I, you've got to say, we could, we should be able to win all four of those games, but I'm not sure we'll be capable of it. Let's not worry too much about the league right now, though, because, of course, we have this semi-final coming up against Wolfsburg. Now, they have gone and signed themselves a couple of absolute wonder kids from Borussia Dortmund in Makoko and Jamie B Boyoin Gittens. I don't know. Jamie Gittens is what we're going to call him. They've got Hoybier, Terreira. So they've got a aging midfield, but it, it's an experienced one. Let's actually take a look at how that. It's only going to show me Europa League, innit? You know? It's really annoying. I wish it showed me their stats for everything. I want to see how they've done 
everything this season. But you can see there that Gittens has seven, Makoko with five, and Christopher with five as well. So, I mean, it's it's Gittens and Makoko who I really need to watch out for. Now, them boys are extremely fast. So, I'm hoping the partnership of Fafana and Timber, they get the job done today. It'll be Germany for the first leg then. And this is... What I'm definitely not underestimating because I, I just, I don't know. I, I feel like this is a step up for us. Th this could be really difficult. When I've seen that they got Makoko uh, and Gittens, I instantly thought, oh, th this could be rough. They're going to have some really fierceness coming forward. They play a really aggressive press as well, which we're already seeing. So I am, uh, yeah, it makes me a little bit more nervous that it's going to be hard to get on the front foot. But if they get man sent off early, it might make it a bit easier but Gaetano's just gonna have to watch himself now red card may have made it easier for us but might have ruined this game just a little bit Elin Junior now looking for the ball over to Van Duven and I, I can never really get the angle on them correct I actually don't know as well who would face us in the finals now we've just had a little pop-up saying welcoming back Timber I forgot we signed Timber from Wolfsburg I absolutely forgot that and Timber Stop ball forward. He's found Van Duven. It's a tough angle. Oh, no. It's, oh, yeah. Goal. <laughs> Did anybody else get shot by that? My shooting recently has been so horrendous. And I don't even think that was a good shot. I, but it's gone in. And we're going to take the lead in Germany. It's good ball in behind. Van Duven does really well to hold off his man. But I, I think the goalkeeper has some questions. And I think it might be hard for him to look in the mirror in the morning. Because there is no way on this earth that he should have been letting that hit the back of the net. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Fafana, stay with him. They'll be letting Makoko get. That was unbelievable. That footwork was unbelievable. But luckily for me, he made the wrong choice. And I've overhit that. I cut that too much. Gittens goes beyond his man. It's not a bad ball in. But Fran Garcia collapsed. Sustained pressure now. And Gittens is getting at me and making my life hard. Makoko, block him off. Don't let him fire off a shot. How do you get that through there? That is ridiculous, but it's a good save from Trafford. Oh, CDK. Oh, what a save. Just like that, from their offense to our offense, we can show how dangerous we are. We do actually, in my opinion, probably have better players all round than they do. That is another reckless tackle. Wolfsburg are trying to make this into a killer go. It's a red card for Bar who actually has scored a lot of goals for them in this competition. Reckless. Don't know what's going on. Don't know why they hate us so much, but enjoy your red. And potentially their route back in. They've been playing really well over the last, like, 10, 12 minutes. Well, good luck to them now. It's going to be a lot more difficult. We need to use this to our advantage and try and tack on a couple more goals. Oh, no. Makoko. No, no. If I could have done a foul on him, that Timber, I love you against his old club. What a tackle. Here we go. It's super easy to break them apart. Oh, Van Duven, that was lovely. That was lovely. I believe he's on. It's right before the half. The red card has affected them. It's affected them big time. But I actually firmly believe now we're walking our way in to a Europa League final. And a chance at Champions League football. Because we might not get it through the league. But reckless tackles like that by Barr. And it's going to leave this wide open. And it, there's so much more space on the pitch for me now. And space is something that really we can exploit with this Leeds team. That's how we've built them to play. Now, you would like to think that they will know that go out and get a goal. If they, How important that could be. If they can somehow, with a man less, try and find a goal, that'd be huge for them. So we need to, we really need to fight to stop that from happening. I see it. Tried to loft that one in. That would have been lovely. Oh, CDK picked it up. That is fantastic. Back to Willing Jr. Out to Archibald Gray, who I just want to score a screamer with, to be honest. Willing Jr. Bends that one round to CDK. Oh, God. I feel like a goal here, and we have really tied up this game. Let's bring on Cherky. Was that a good ball in? Van Eyewick. Oh, I really, I'm trying to finish this match up. Big props to their goalkeeper. He has been, uh, he's been really good for them. Oh, Timber. Yeah, do better. Do better there, mate. Oh, that's going to land lovely to Fatuu. Ow, my goalkeeper. How is he so good? I can't believe this isn't free. Maybe that's enough for them to hold on and it not be 3-0. I, I, that might actually be enough 
to give them an opportunity. Who knows how good they're going to be with actually the right amount of players on the pitch. They might be really good, but they ain't that good with 10 men. And Ellen Road is a really hard place to go. So I still feel very, very comfortable with a two goal advantage. Well, Barca won 2-0 against Monaco as well. So I think we already knew that was going to be the case. But after Monaco beat Arsenal, I was like, who knows? But I think it would be Barca in the final. All right, we're starting to play next in the league two days later so we do have some tiredness but we need to pick up another victory here at the london stadium so that there is some dream that we can get top four just from the league i don't want to get champions league football just purely for winning the europa league i mean if we have to do that we will do that's how we got the europa league football the first time by winning the fa cup but i would like to prove that we are a top four side now i don't think that this will be an easy game I really like the look of West Ham's squad, but I also think we've been really good recently at just tearing teams apart as Maxi's going to have the shot. I, I want another one of them to come off. The finesses just haven't fallen recently. Willing Jr. Willing Jr. In behind the PR. Oh, he just couldn't get enough on it. I wanted to lift it over the goalkeeper, but it was such a close call. He was coming at me rapidly. Who does someone we've wanted? We targeted at one point. He's a really, really good player. Who have now our old player, Riki. Oh, how has he done that? Well blocked, though, by Pachar. Score relatively early just to make life easier. Maxi nearly scored another corner. What a save by David Raya, by the way. Let's let's give him that. Great reactions, but I'm just shocked that Maxi's winning header. But if we had any kind of height on a corner, yeah, we'd be so dangerous. It's so much more difficult for us now. Because look at that. That's to Rafinha. So regardless, we're still not getting it to someone with much height. Cherky can score them. This time, though, he didn't get enough height. Oh, thank God he got up with the cam injuries we've been getting recently. I thought he was going to stay down. I'm not particularly good at these, so let's just see if we can whip something in with some power going forward. And we can, forcing a save. We actually really seem to struggle to break the deadlock in the first half. I don't know what it is, especially in away games. Hopefully, going out into the second half, we'll be able to take a couple of our chances. It doesn't help that Raya is a brilliant goalkeeper. And West Ham have signed some decent players, but they still sit back as if, like, David Moyes is there. Like, that's their programming in the game. It would be awesome to see them, like, advance a little bit as teams advance with their players and stuff. They, they don't play aggressively at all. They just defend, which we've got really good at picking teams apart. And then they just kind of break every now and again. They're having such a stalemate here against them. As Kudos fires off one. You'll never guess what. Somewhere along the way, Cherky picked up a knock. I don't know when it is. It must have been relatively recent. I don't know. But he picks up a knock. There's another Cam injury. Lewis Miley playing at Cam again. It's not where we want him to be. But he's going to be seeing quite a bit of action there. If these injuries keep happening, they've got the height. God. They rattle the crossbar. That is actually the substitute they've just brought on that rattle the crossbar there. I don't want to jinx it. I don't want it to happen, actually. So jinxing it won't be that bad. But I think we're on for a point. I struggled in patches to win the ball back off of them as the teams got more tired. But also, I've actually struggled to break them down. They've defended. I said earlier about the David Moyes thing. They've actually defended extremely well in this game, which has made my life really difficult. Although Maxi here... Does have the legs. Does he have the finish? He should pass it. He should have passed it. Miley! Oh! 87th minute. Lewis Miley is our cam. We'll make it 1-0 Leeds United. And come the end of the season, this might be one of the biggest goals of our year. Now, it's just, can we hold on? Will they even play offensive? They've not played offensive all game. I don't know if it'll change. Moisey's still there in FC. I'm not sure that they will change their outlook whatsoever. It would be cool to see them go for it a bit more now, but I don't think it's going to happen. Like, the urgency, considering it's the 91st minute at this stage, is non-existent to them right now. And the urgency never came from West Ham. What a big three points that is. What a great goal for Miley right at the end. And Aston Villa beat Tottenham. That has huge implications for us in terms of at least being clear in fifth. Yeah, we are now four points clear in fifth. Game in hand on Newcastle. 
they keep doing what they need to do. We just need to win every game now. That That's just it. Straight up, Crystal Palace, Sheffield United, and I think Southampton, we have to win them all. Well, Gibbs White does come back, but we are going to lose Cherky to a bruised shoulder. That's it. That's actually all right. Wolfsburg take two then, and I am going to sim it, but I'm not going to quick sim it. I'm going to like sim it the way we said before kind of just see if we can uh we could pick up a result here it's a strong 11 like it's near enough my full strength 11 and let's just see if we can just pick up a win here it's, it's pretty much a full strength 11 so it's a very strong team i would expect to at least hold out in this game but who knows wolfsburg might make it a match make it a bit more memorable but we have been very good at ellen Rock. wow we've actually gone and taken the lead as well with jason van duven bagging the goal it's three nil now at this stage and i feel pretty comfortable that we're going through to the next round or am i comfortable they peg a goal back at this stage there's still a long way to go in the game and if they grab another it's wide open, this game, all of a sudden. Oh, right at the start of the second half. CDK makes it 4-1. I'm happy with this one. I'm actually now just going to jump to result. 2-1 is how it finishes as well. CDK and Jason Van Duven on the night with the goal. But who are we playing in the final? Of course, we're playing Barcelona. Did you expect it to be anybody else? Before we could play Barcelona, we played Crystal Palace, Sheffield United, and Southampton for a top four spot. And I'm going to need the sim gods to be kind to me in some of these games. And the sim gods let me down instantly in the first game as we draw 2-2 two -two with Crystal Dam Palace. But we do manage to get back on track against Sheffield United. Jason Van Duven with two, CDK and Ellen Jr. Where does that put us in the race for Champions League football? We might be out of it. We are a point different Going into this final game of the season. Oh my god. Who do Newcastle play? Newcastle play against Manchester United. So in hopes, as long as we beat Southampton, we should have Champions League football. All we can do at St. Mary's here then is just do our job. Get the victory at any cost. It is a rotated side. Obviously, we've got the Europa League final coming up in like three days. I don't know why. I'm sure there's normally a week in between. I could be wrong. Let me know if I am actually wrong. But I'm sure there's normally like a week in between of like the European final. But for some strange reason on this game, there isn't. I missed cutting that out. Trafford saves it. Tentative start. Lynn Jr. just played a superb ball down to Cherky. Cherky, can he get it in? He does. But yeah, 1-0. <laughs> I hate trying to shoot on his left foot. The effort was there. The conviction, actually, from him was there as well. Just not the finish. You know, back over to Bia. Bia again for a second try. Again, left foot is very, very weak. I need to get him on his right. I really need to get him on his right. Will and Junior. This could work out. Lift it. Bia, lift it back over. That's nice. Gibbs White! Oh, Morgan Gibbs White has just hit form at all the right time. He's back from his injury. It's his first game back. And it's going to be 1-0 Leeds United. Very close to the half. Oh, I, I felt nervous. The games felt nervous, but I felt nervous about this one. What a super well-worked goal as well. And Gibbs White deserves it. He's having a hell of a season, lads, honestly. He might go down as one of those signings that, you know, cheap bargain signing. We kind of just got him to cover spots. And he's ended up being fantastic. Lovely Archie Gray. Making a run forward. That doesn't happen often. It should have been two. Actually, Gray's got an injury. But B has been played in behind. It's that left foot again. I really need to get him on his right, but I just can't. All the opportunities for Millen Jr. are always going to come from that left foot. He's set himself up here, maybe. Right foot this time. It's saved. Can Gibbs White get there? He plays it all the way across. Oh, my God. I can't believe we didn't score there. Archie Gray, though, unfortunately, is definitely injured. And, and that's devastating news. I hope it's a bruised shoulder. But even with a bruised shoulder, he will not be playing. Our captain as well. He won't be playing in the Europa League final. I can't think of a worse person for, for this just to happen to. I really can't. And I, I'm at a loss now because I don't know who to start as captain for the final. And I'm not going to get your guys' feedback because it's the next game after this. So, I need to figure out who makes the most sense in my head. I think if Rafinha starts the final, it will be Rafinha. For, for me, I think that makes the most sense. Well, the worst part about this is we have no idea what the Newcastle score is. And if they're having a good performance, Mara, oh my god, what a save, Trafford. Time for some subs for us then, as we, we are on the edge here, lads. We are on the edge. 
of winning this game, Champions League football potentially, but I also need those fresh legs for the Barca game. I just do. I need the fresh legs. Back to out. Oh, what a ball for Bia. It's not a bad touch. Oh, he's actually done really well. He's actually done supremely well. He fools the defender. We finally get him on his right foot. It's going to be 2 0 Leeds United. And hopefully that's that game tucked in. It's done and dusted. Look at this. Great touch. Great finish. That's actually going to be Maxi's last bit of play because I want him to be on the bench for the Barca game. I'm going to start Van Duven, obviously. He is. He's still our starting striker. And he will be going into the next season with unbelievable backup from Maxi. But let's get Young on here. Let's rest Maxi so he can be on the bench. Because we might need to bring someone like him on. Young, he's taken that really well. Young, still. Young, still? Oh, what a finish from the Frenchman. Maybe he can keep number nine next season. I'm only kidding. He's definitely not having number nine next season. I think we give that to Van Duven. But what a finish that is. Good ball on again to Young. Is this going to be another for him? Oh, he hits the post this time. But we do seem to be celebrating. But that could mean anything. Because they might take Europa League as a really positive thing here. But the big thing is, what was that Newcastle score? I'm kind of nervous here, seeing if they got a result, if they got a good one. They drew! They drew with Manchester United! It means we can go into the game against Barcelona in Paris, knowing that we already have Champions League football. That just releases all the shackles. I am pressing all the buttons out of excitement. We have shackles free. We finish fourth. I think you have to play a qualifying game if you finish fourth. Who gives a goddamn that we have to do any of that because four place is actually fantastic this is the best season so far at Leeds United it's the most consistent one we have some big time players we can add even more big time players now that we are a Champions League side that changes everything in terms of transfer policy for me moving into season number six but the only thing that matters right now is Leeds United versus Barcelona in the Europa League final now before we head to that game in Paris I want to look at the stats for this season uh, and I want to look at top goal scorers. Of course, we knew it was going to be uh, Jason Van Duven. 18 in 5. Is that a good enough return? Is is where I'm racking my brain. But he's 87 overall now. He's 23. He's just going to be getting better. Like, he, he's Van Nissel, right? This kid. He, he's just going to keep getting better and keep on improving. And do you know what's great about this team? He doesn't have to score a ton of goals. Because we have players like Illin Jr., who for me is probably player of the season. He's legit our Ronaldo. He honestly is. He played 49 games this season with 14 goals and 11 assists. Then we've got Fatou, and I'm actually really impressed. When I look at the results of Fatou this year, I think Rafinha's been better. I think he's been more impactful, but he has played 10 less games. But Fatou has 10 goals and 9 assists. That's a really impressive performance. CDK, great year as well. Bringing him in has been huge. And the supporting cast for him as well, we should mention, has been huge. 5 goals, 5 assists for Gibbs White. So, we have goal scorers now all over the pitch. Quinton Timber, 2 assists, 6 goals. Maxi comes into the team and with 15 games, scores 8 goals. That is a great return for him. I think, if anything, he is definitely more potent in front of goal than Van Duven. I love the Rafinha signing. Although he's 31, he's getting on. We probably need another winger next year. I did notice when we had some injuries or some tiredness, we were just missing one winger. I think just one left-sided guy. That's all we need to bring in. Or we have Bear coming back. So there's that. We need to make that decision. Is Bear Champions League ready? I, I don't know, but... Great year for Rafinha. Young's had come in. He's played his part. He's gone up by three. Van Eywick's done well this year. Cherky, six assists, three goals. I'm very happy with that. We all together, in my opinion, we've just had a fantastic year. And I think moving into next year, it's just going to be a case of pinpointing one or two deals that really just take this team to the next level. But apart from that, I'm so happy with this squad. The Champions League, however, though, could be a real steep learning curve. But let's put all of that to one side for now, because coming up next is Leeds United versus Barcelona in the Europa League final. Oh my god, this Barcelona team is absolutely disgusting. From top to bottom, there is not a weak link in this team, boys. Like, how is this team even in the Europa League? What happened to them? How have they fallen this far? This is ridiculous. 
I would have much preferred to play Monaco. It starts at the back with Testegen, and now the experience of Gabriel, Araujo, Gusto, and Mendes. In front of them will be sitting Ruben Neves, along with Bruno G and Pedri. God, that midfield is disgusting. No slouches on the wing either, as they sign Noni Maruake for us. I'm hoping he's starred for them, and Ferran Torres on the left. With the wonder kid, who at this point will be a beast, an animal, Marcus Leonardo. Now, when it comes to our 11, this is pretty much what you'd expect here in Paris when it comes to the injuries and fitness that we have. We made the decision to bring in Oliver Skip in the center of the park for the injured Archie Gray. Unfortunately, he'll be out for four weeks. He might be tired, but it's Selling Jr. on the left and Rafinha on the right. Pacho currently has the captain's armband, but don't worry, that will be being swapped to Rafinha, and it's Van Duven up top today for us. We have a tired right back in Van Iwick, so Cody Drama will start. And I tell you something, these games are going to feel so much, and, and I mean infinitely better when we get to be back on FC 25, because they're inputting all the pre-game stuff again. And I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I love that. I'd even sometimes bring you the formation and the lineup in that pre-game bit, but the fact that that's not in there anymore is, is just infuriating. For some of the big games, this one wasn't horrendous, but it's not the same feel. This is a big night in Paris on the big stage at a big time stadium against one of the world's greatest teams. There's no doubt in that in my mind. And we're trying to be one of the world's best teams. Let's see what we can do. Rafinha obviously against his old side as well. I forgot to mention that. Bright starts are important, but also being settled is important. And players like Cody Drama have been great this year, so they have a real opportunity. We play that first ball in today in this game. They actually do. They have a huge opportunity to shine. Same with Oliver Skip. We've used him massively. He doesn't have the same ability level as Archie Gray in terms of being comfortable on the ball, but defensively, he should offer a lot today. This Barca side, though, the, this Barca side, though, is uh, extremely scary to be coming up against, especially without Archie Gray, especially without Van Iwick. It's uh, it's a worrying, worrying game for me, this. Their tiki-taka basically versus ours, Leonardo flashes that beyond the post. Well, Illin Jr's just gone down and stayed down. Could it get any worse? I've just likened him to basically being our Ronaldo. Our injury's just coming at the wrong time for us. I, it feels like it. It feels like we're getting super unlucky here towards the end of the season. He's going to take that, though, is Illin Jr. And now I tell you what, space has opened up. Fran Garcia waited to play a terrible pass. And Ellen can run it off because we don't have the options on the bench at left since we let Oda Bear go. And I'm now I'm slowly regretting it. I tell you what, we might have to bring on Bia as, as a, a midfielder. He can do it. He's capable of it. He's got the pace for it as well. Weird watching two teams with the same philosophy play against each other. It's disgusting. This just could be a step too far. Leonardo again, Trafford, big say. Well, that breaking play is going to cause us to have to make this sub. Samuel Lillian Jr.'s final comes cut very short. And we're going to bring on Maxi. He can play out wide. That was one of his versatile options. So I'm actually really glad that we can bring him on for that. It does mean that Van Duven most likely now is playing this entire game, though, as we try... And fight our way into this match. Well, I'll tell you something. In this game so far, at halftime, one team looks like Barcelona. And one team looks like they've not been to this before. They look like they've not played in this occasion before. And that's definitely us, Leeds United. We are struggling out there like mad. Now, hopefully, second half, we can just, I, I don't know, kick it up a notch. Barca got unlucky not to score. Leonardo, a couple of good chances. Saved by Trafford. And that's it. That's the story. Oliver Skip gives that away. We can't play the Tiki Taka as well if Oliver Skip. That is my biggest issue. Oh, my God. Get to Ferran Torres. Fafana makes up. Oh, my God. I I need a break. I need to lie down already. Oh, about 65 minutes and not much gone our way until now, Van Duven. Oh, nothing's gone my way until Van Duven makes it 1-0. All we needed was a moment, and he scores the biggest goal of his career, of this Leeds United career mode. CDK with the ball in, was it? It was, wasn't it? Them two have linked up so well, but what a finish. And Barcelona will be kicking themselves because they're wonder kid up top. He's had chances. He's had way more chances than Jason Van Duven, and he has not taken them. Moments away from being Europa League champions. I say moments. There's still plenty of time left. And we've not really touched the ball. I said it. We haven't really touched the football. 
We have defended well. We got a little bit lucky. James Trafford's made some great saves also. And they come. Working that ball forward. Ferran. Can't get past Fafana. That is great defending again. I'll say one thing in this game, and that is that we have defended well. Oh, no. They're in this time. Oh, my God, Pichel. That is the biggest tackle of his career, of my career. That is an unbelievable tackle. And we are breaking through. We are breaking through with Cody Drama. And I can spot Maxi making a run. And I tried to loft it in, but I couldn't. I don't think I can get over this moment here. Marcus Leonardo in an acre. He's open. He's about to shoot the shot and Pacho stops him. That is absolutely massive because look at this. Leonardo is ba he's bearing down on goal, lads. He's bearing down on goal. It's about to be 1-1. Let's be honest. We know what time it's about to be. Pacho gets there first. That is huge. Nine embers. Two minutes added on, lads. We are about to be crowned champions. Collect that, Trafford. Oh, my God. Kick this one out. Have the whistle blown and see Leeds United crowned as Europa League winners. Season 5 is where it's been at, boys. We win the Europa League. We finish top 4. Boy, did we spend a fortune to try and get there. I'm not going to lie. If we, haven't, if we hadn't done any of that, we'd have been in a very, very compromising position. We went into this final underwhelmingly down in terms of strength. We had to start Drama. Drama had an unbelievable game of football. Fair play to him. No Archie Gray. Absolutely devastating that he's not lifting this trophy. But the man Rafinha will. This has been an unreal season with some unreal performers. And it's going to be capped off by an unreal trophy lift with that man Rafinha picking it up. He returns to the club from Liverpool, a bit of Barcelona as well obviously, and he returns to the club and he gets to lift the Europa League trophy, maybe maybe the Champions League next, I'm not going to push my boat out too much, what a team we've built here boys, what a season we've had, it's been an absolute pleasure bringing it to you, I appreciate each and every one of you I'm going to celebrate this one tonight there's no lie about that, I'm off to make myself a cup of tea